My boyfriend's sister filled my yard with gnomes. I got rid of them after two months. Boyfriend's furious. So me, 26 female, boyfriend is 27 male, and his sister is 28 female. I'm not sure what to do. My boyfriend's sister, Chrissy, pulled a prank on me two months ago. She left about 50 gnomes <laughs> in my front yard. No warning. They were just there. I called people up and asked them, but no one would tell me. I guess this is a part of the prank. I fucking had no clue what was going on. Eventually, Eventually, the kids in the neighborhood started picking them off one by one, so I brought them inside of my garage. Two of them were pretty cute, so I cleaned them up and put them in my house. I waited for someone to come clean, but no one did. After three weeks, I decided I was just going to donate them. A few friends asked if they could have some, and I let them. I started giving them to people <laughs> who commented on one being interesting or cute. I told my boyfriend about my army, and he laughed. I thought he might have done it, but he said he honestly didn't, so I believed him. Well. He went on a four-week trip with his family to Europe. I got a few emails from him, but we were both busy. I went on a trip myself for work and for pleasure. So when he got back, he asked how the gnomes were treating me, and I let him know that most of them had found new homes. He got really silent and asked how many I had left. I told him 10. He asked who took them and said we needed to get them back. I was confused. It had been two months, and the gnomes were kind of a funny story, but I don't remember everyone who took one, let alone the kids who picked off about 10 from the front lawn. He then told me they belonged to Chrissy, who thought I had just stored them in my garage, which is why she didn't pick them up before the big trip. Chrissy is his sister. Apparently, Chrissy has been pulling the gnome army prank for years, and I am the bitch who gave away her army. My boyfriend is furious with me and asked why I would do that. I told him he should have come clean, and I would have just kept them in my garage for her to pick them up later. He said it wasn't how the prank worked. He said he needs to rethink the relationship now. He wants me to get them back as they are dear to Chrissy. Chrissy doesn't know yet. I'm not sure what to do about this. I had a few people offer to return their gnomes, but the rest of the people said they gave them away to so-and-so and didn't know where they were now. This is such a surreal situation. I have no fucking clue what to do about it. I don't see how I was wrong, but I feel bad. No. What can I do? I so the update is coming about 12 days later. I decided to bite the bullet and talk to Chrissy. I brought the gnome I had to her house and knocked on the door. Chrissy's mom answered and asked me to come in. I was tired of the immaturity and mind games. My boyfriend had been sending me threatening, quote, get me more gnomes, bitch, type text. I could see a lot of red flags or red hats, if you are so inclined. I wanted Chrissy to have her gnomes back and just get it over with. When I handed Mrs. Mom the open box, she asked where I got these. She seemed really upset I even had them. <gasps> I told her the story, pretty much what I said in the post, but with some more detail. Her reply was, Joe has been telling a totally different story. Joe's the boyfriend. She seemed really hurt about the whole thing. And while I wanted to make a quick getaway, I was fucking curious. Blah, blah, blah. Mrs. Mom told me a little bit of the background. I'm not going to repeat everything she said because some of it is sad and pathetic and a little too dark for a post about a gnome invasion. The gnome army belonged to Chrissy's late boyfriend, Steve. Steve and Chrissy used to put them in people's yards and then demand another member for their army. So the gnomes came from people Steve and Chrissy knew over a period of about five years. Steve passed away. Chrissy stopped the gnome pranks and put them into storage. She has not pulled the prank in almost two years now, but freaks out if someone mentions getting rid of the gnomes or even moving the box. I felt like an asshole, but Mrs. Mom thanked me for bringing some of them back. She did say the annoying line, you should have kept them even if you didn't know who they belonged to. She did say she was going to replace the gnomes in the boxes with other ones and hope Chrissy didn't notice. Not sure that was a smart idea. She said she wanted to believe me, but that this is likely the last time she would want me in her house. Gee, thanks. Oh. I said that was fine. I had no intention of staying in a family who pulled weird pranks, then blamed the victims. One bridge burned. I mean, I understand she is likely upset because Chrissy apparently doesn't handle any mention of Steve well. She is likely going to be upset and never speak to the person at fault again, which is likely me. How I got them out of storage unit three hours away? Question mark, question mark. The mystery will likely haunt their family for years. As for my now ex-boyfriend, I went to his house and asked him why he pulled the prank. His answer was stupid and telling. I don't know. 
He wouldn't answer me and he wouldn't tell me what was going on. He said he just wanted to do something cute. Then it got out of hand and he thought I would keep them. Something about having his own little secret made him happy. <gasps> got my things from his room and left. I told him that our mutual friend Jake would bring his stuff by at a later time. Jake agreed to this and said Joe's story was bullshit. I guess Joe told people I got the gnomes out of storage and put them in the yard to get attention. That totally makes sense, right? I guess it was spiteful to do, but I sent Chrissy a message on Facebook. Chrissy, I don't think we'll be friends after this. I know you want to believe your brother, but I did not take your gnomes. I did not know that they were in my yard or even that you had them. Please understand, I would never aim to hurt, steal, or take from you. Your brother admitted to putting them in my yard, though I have no idea why he did it. I got an okay back and then she blocked me. I blocked Joe and his family. I'm not sure what to do now, but it has been a really interesting few weeks for sure. I my sister-in-law wore a wedding dress to my wedding. Story time. So my husband, who we'll call Steve, has a sister who we'll call Amy. Amy is the biggest... <laughs> ugly slut? No. Amy is the biggest brat ever. Amy had some sort of like childhood sickness. But she overcame it. However, his parents became extremely lenient with her because of this. To the point where they couldn't discipline her in any way without becoming a massive deal. And she's been let go of multiple jobs because of this. She also doesn't have many friends because she always has to be the center of attention. Well, we've tried to raise this with them many, many times. <laughs> we've tried to raise this with them many, many times. That girl is a touchy subject. I just met with the word. She had it rough during her childhood disease. Oh, so do so many people, but they're not assholes. Tell us how it's not our place to tell them how to parent their daughter. So me and my husband decided to have a summer wedding. And to my surprise, Amy showed up wearing a lacy white dress. I would have easily believed this if they told me she directly picked this from a wedding catalog. So during the cocktail hour, loads of people were asking me about Amy. And I must have been becoming visually annoyed. Many people thought she was my husband's ex. <laughs> she was just trying to be majorly petty. My best friend is called Stacy. Stacy is the closest thing to a sister I have because I'm an only child. We are very, very protective of each other. And I could tell the situation was pissing her off. Just had that look in her eyes. So I watched Stacy walk over to my husband's family, greet them. She's like, hi, hi, how are we? Have a nice time. Yeah, great time. Oh, don't you look lovely, Susan? Don't you look lovely, Karen? Oh, beautiful wedding, beautiful wedding. Stacy was a little bit tipsy. As she was walking past Amy, she tripped and fell spilling a full glass of wine all over her lacy white dress amy sprinted into the bathroom of course my mother-in-law was in tow steve's dad then came up to me and began shouting at me at my wedding i don't think so steve's dad i don't think so he was demanding that i tell stacy to leave i was like no hunt stacy's just a big fat lightweight it was all a mistake we did say that we'd make sure that stacy sobered up a little bit before the reception so during the reception, incredibly, Amy's wearing a beautiful green dress that she'd bought as a backup. And Stacy just magically felt so much less drunk. My in-laws have not stopped bringing this incident up. I have a hard time feeling bad about this situation, even though I know for a fact it wasn't a mistake. Do I have a story time for you? I believe in God, but what happened to me yesterday, it shows that he is real and he watches me like a freaking hawk. Yesterday, I woke up bright and early to make my drive out to LA to attend some events for work. First event was right in the middle of downtown LA. Downtown LA is such a bad area. Whenever I have to go to downtown LA, I usually like to park at a friend's house and then I'll Uber in because people are a little sketchy in downtown. The parking is sketchy, but my friend wasn't home. So I just drove my car and I'm thinking to myself, everything's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Three hours later, we made it to downtown LA. It's 10.30 a.m. I really thought there was gonna be some street meter parking available, but there was none. Look at my clock, and because I was trying to find parking, I got myself 30 minutes late to this event. And showing up to events in LA late makes me panic. So then after giving up on the street meter parking, I did see that there was a parking garage right across from my event location. So I thought, great, I'll just park there. I pull into the parking garage, it's underground. And then the man gives me a valet ticket because it's just so cramped inside, they have to park the car for you. He said that the cost of it was $10 for the first 30 minutes, but once you go over 30 minutes, it's $20 for the whole day. The price made me want to cry but i was already 30 minutes late to my event here was parking here was a nice man saying that he was gonna park my car gave me a valet ticket 
I said, take all my money. I need to just go get this done and then go to the next event after. So I give the nice man my keys. Anyways, I do the event. It's so much fun. And then I walk back to the parking garage. I give a different worker there my valet ticket. He goes and grabs my car. I wait a little bit, but then here's my car. I showed up to the parking garage 32 minutes after initially bringing my car. So I had to pay the $20. So when the nice man pulled up with my car, I handed him my card to charge the $20 off. He looks at me as I'm trying to give him my card and all he says is cash only. Oh, uh, I'm confused because there's no cash only signs in this sketchy underground parking garage. And I'm telling him there's no cash only signs. How, uh, here's my card. You can absolutely charge my card. Then he walks over to the clerk window and there is an open sign and this man flips it around and it says cash only on the back. Keep telling him that I have no cash on me, but is there an ATM inside? Is there an ATM right outside? And I, I promise I'll come right back. All he keeps telling me is no cash, no leave. So there I was in an underground parking garage in downtown LA with a strange man holding me captive because I didn't have cash. Oh my gosh. This was not a great situation to be in. Internally, I'm having a full on mental breakdown realizing that I'm in a very, very sticky situation. I'm thinking to myself, Danny, start looking under your seats for dollar bills. But of course, I had just cleaned my car. So I had a couple dollar bills under my seat and left them in my house. So I'm freaking out. I'm looking all over my car for extra change. I'm thinking, am I going to have to call somebody to come help me? I'm looking through my car and not finding any money. I'm panicking more. I'm thinking to myself, my friend who lives in LA isn't even here right now. Do I have to call my grandpa and have him drive $20 to me in LA so I can get out of a sketchy parking garage. Then I calm down. I'm in my car looking for cash. The man is getting angry. <laughs> I don't want the man angry at me. And I'm, I'm praying in my head. I'm saying, God, <laughs> I'm down bad. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And that was when I checked my glove box, which I had just cleaned out my glove box. There is no money in there. When I was going through my glove box, I pulled everything out, genuinely my last resort. And in the back of my glove box, I see a dollar bill. I pull out that dollar bill and then I see another dollar bill. And then I see a third dollar bill. I pull out this little tiny stash of dollar bills for some reason in the back of my glove box that I have zero recollection ever putting there. Pull it out, I count it. It is 20 $1 bills, so. I give the man his money and I leave the parking garage. How is it that I just cleaned out my glove box the day before and didn't see $20? I also have zero recollection of ever, ever putting that money there. So as I was driving out of this parking structure, I realized that my back windows were cracked a little bit and the valet man smoked a cig in my car. Which usually would have really pissed me off. But in that moment, God had my freaking back and I was free. God really said not today, Satan, because the situation that I did get myself in was really bad but i got out and thinking that this was all just one big coincidence mm, i don't think so i actually think my mother might just be the most delusional woman i know let me set the scene for you i had just landed from austin and i was in my uber home and okay that's like the rarest time to, like that's not a fun time to catch somebody like i'm in a cranky fucking mood i've been traveling all day i should have known not to take the phone call from my mother because like i don't want to be Annoyed, love her dearly. I don't want to be annoyed. This woman, I'm telling her about my weekend. We're having a great talk out of nowhere. She's like, I think Sissy would be really good at helping people find jobs. And I'm like, okay, like how the fuck did we get from like, oh my God, I rode a bowl in Austin to then like Sissy would be really great at helping people find jobs. Like, why the fuck are we talking about Sissy? Sissy's my older sister, if you don't know, but like how the, how the fuck did we just get on the topic of Sissy? My mom was like, well, I was thinking about your one friend who's looking for a restaurant job. I think it'd be a great business for Sissy to start to help people find jobs like that. I'm like, oh, okay, that, yeah, okay, sure. I'm like, but then that actually makes no fucking sense to me. I was like very honest. I was like, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. That makes absolutely no fucking sense. You want someone who needs a job in the restaurant industry or is looking for like a part-time job to pay sissy to help them find a job that makes no fucking sense how is sissy gonna make any money and my mom is like well no i also think she would be great at helping with people budget and finances i was like yeah for sure and she's like and doing their taxes and their investments i'm like well hold on a minute like sissy would fully have to go back to school to get like 
her CPA or whatever it is to like do to, I'm like, you want Susie to become an accountant? And she's like, no, it's not that I want her to help people with investments and like help with their taxes. And I was like, so you want her to be an accountant? I'm like, mom, Sissy would have to go back to school for that. And she was like, no, you don't. Like, you don't need that anymore. Like, you don't need to go back to school for things, which is such a bold fucking statement because that woman gave me so much shit for dropping out of college. Now she thinks Sissy could just magically become a fucking accountant with no school and also, Sissy doesn't want to do that. That's where this is all like the weirdest story ever where I'm like, mom, where are you getting these ideas? Thinking Sissy would want to like be an accountant. At this point of the phone call, I'm getting heavily annoyed because I don't know how we went from my weekend in Austin to Sissy being a fucking accountant when Sissy doesn't even want to do that. My mom has that tendency to like wake up and just be like, you know what? Sissy could do anything. Like, my mom always pitches a job opportunity to like up for Sissy to me. And she's like, she could all, she could be your lawyer. Like, yeah, what? Fuck, fuck law school sissy could do it sissy i'm like sissy could do open heart surgery in my mother's eyes sissy could work at a fucking rodeo and ride bulls in my mother's eyes sissy could do absolutely anything oh you need sissy to be a plumber she got you like sissy could do anything literally anything apparently like i really can't with this phone call anymore because it's it's really it's killing my brain cells that are already not fucking there because i'm exhausted and i'm like oh i gotta go mom sissy's calling me of course she's like oh yeah yeah go ahead go right ahead answer her call i'm like be so for real. So I'm telling Sissy, and I know I've said Sissy a lot during this video, and it's actually making me cringe the amount of times I've said that bitch's name. Anyway, so I'm telling her everything that happened. I'm like, mom thinks that you can be a fucking accountant. And she's like, I don't even want to be an accountant. And I'm like, well, good luck telling her that because this bitch just talked to me for 20 minutes about how you can do people's investments, you can do their taxes, you can do all these things. And Sissy's like, what? And I'm like, oh yeah, and mom basically wanted you to be a recruiter again. And Sissy's like, no, I quit that job because I hated that job. And I was like, no, but a recruiter for restaurant industry. Like it's I'm like, she wants you to be indeed, bitch. Like that she wants you to be fucking LinkedIn at this point. And she's like, why? And I was like, I don't know. She just went on a fucking rampage about how you could do everything. And she says he was like, no, like I don't really want to do any of that. I'm like, well tell our fucking mother that because she's over there convinced that you're about to run for fucking president and you could do absolutely anything you want. Like I was genuinely so fed up. I was like, I can't mom, I really cannot do this right now. Don't get me wrong, I love my mother, but her delivery Delusion is delusioning right now. This is how I told my boyfriend that I was pregnant in college. Don't judge me, but I forgot to take my makeup off because my kids jumped me last night. I was 19 at the time and he was 20. I was in my second year of college and he was in his third. Fresh. I already shared the story of how I found out I was pregnant halfway through my pregnancy. Like I said, I took a picture and basically saw that I had a baby bump. And so I decided to take a test. And I was definitely in denial because the bump came out of nowhere. So when I took a test, I decided to take it without him. Even though we were so close and we did everything together. I just didn't want to be the girl who cried pregnant. Like I said, very clearly still in denial. So anyway, I take the test, obviously find out that I'm pregnant. And then I just remember like, I just went in my room and I was just crying. We had separate apartments, but they were in like the same townhouse community. And I feel like they're kind of similar at like every college. So I remember mine was like one way and then there was a pond and then his was on the other side. And we planned on keeping a separate space until we were married. This new brush is so chunky and cute. So anyway, I tell him, I have to tell him something and he needs to come over. So of course I worried him. And then I decided to just stop answering his calls after i told him that so he comes over just in my room in the dark boo hooing he's like what's wrong like what happened and he's just so confused so concerned because i really like i definitely cry of course it takes a lot out of me to really get me to the point that i was at like i was crying hard so then for a second he's just like laying holding me on my bed it's so dramatic looking back he's just giving me a minute to cry I finally managed to say that i am pregnant then I continue crying and he was just shocked. And then of course he told me everything would be okay, not to worry. We were both just like super shocked. And he was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know what happened. But I definitely always treated having kids as like a very serious thing. And so did he. And we wanted to be very planned with that. I wanted to completely plan my life down to a T. But we all know that life does not work that way. So then we just immediately start thinking tons of what ifs about if we're gonna finish college, um, what our parents are gonna say. But I do remember that after I told him before any appointments, it was winter and he would always like help me get down the stairs and make sure I was very careful to not get hurt and just extra cautious of our baby. I was super confident that he would be a good dad just because of the man that he was. Then if you saw my other videos, we ended up going to the appointment like a week later. I thought I was already halfway through my pregnancy. And now five years later, we are married and we have three kids.
I found out that my birth parents are married to each other and I have full siblings. I was adopted at three months old. I had a dysfunctional family growing up, but I was cared for and loved. Both of my adopted parents passed away in separate car accidents. My dad when I was 17 and my mom three years ago when I was 24. I had a semi-open adoption, but my birth parents requested my adoptive parents stop sending them photos and updates about me when I was less than a year old. I had a vague idea of who my birth parents were. I grew up knowing their names and I had several photos of them. I did a DNA test and was matched with three full siblings, which shocked me. I was always told they were young and that they barely knew each other and wanted to further their education. About three months ago, I decided to Google their names and I found their social media. Turns out they are married to each other now. I stalked them on Facebook a bit and it seems like they have a relatively happy life. I ended up reaching out to my birth mother via Facebook, telling her that I would love to get to know her and that I've had a great life and that I have no expectations. She took a month to respond and when she did, she said she was surprised that I had reached out and to please not contact any of my siblings as they aren't aware of my existence. I didn't respond for a few days, but I ended up just asking her why she chose to give me up and why she never told anyone about me. She responded and said that I was a NICU baby. She and my birth father were 17 when I was born and they weren't prepared to raise a disabled child. She said at the time that they were under the impression that I would never live independently and that they weren't in a place to have a special needs child. I was again shocked. I definitely was in the lower percentiles for growth until puberty, but according to my grandmother, by the time I was 8 months old, I was hitting all of the markers for regular mental development. I have a master's in mathematics from a tier 1 university. I was an athlete in high school and I never had any issues in school beyond being really horrible in art class. I'm married with a child. I'm a fully functioning adult with a successful career and a family of my own, and it hurts to know I was given up on because of the slight chance I wouldn't turn out perfect. Part of me feels like I missed out on a life with siblings. I was raised as an only child and that I could still have a chance to know them and love them and that my daughter would have a chance to have cousins. My youngest siblings aren't even in elementary school yet and I could have a normal sibling bond with them or at least be part of their lives from a young age and I wish that I had that chance. I am not angry at my birth parents for giving me away. I don't hate them. I am hurt but I'm not angry. I am angry that they've requested I not reach out to my adult siblings and I'm considering doing it anyway. Am I the arsehole for giving my boyfriend's girl best friend a reality check? Story time. My husband has one of those friends. We'll call her Amy. What else are we going to call her? Her and I have gotten on fine for years. But every now and again, she will make a comment. She'll sit a little bit close. Or she'll even go as far as to sit on his bloody knee. She even tries to tell me that she knows him better than I do. I don't think that's possible, babe. So I've spoken to Steve several times about this. And about how she's completely out of order sometimes. The majority of times to be fair it's so many like micro actions that we look a bit strange if we called her out for every single one of them so this past weekend me and this big group of friends we all got together including amy so me and steve actually got married secretly a few weeks prior and it was at this meetup where we told everybody everyone was congratulating us hugging us amy sat with a face like ice honestly girly was giving olaf a run for his money that was when amy went running up to steve and was shouting at him about how let down she felt. She was like, I'm so let down that you didn't even tell me. Let alone get invited. Learning about how we didn't even send her any pictures. And Steve was like, Amy, no one except our parents knew. Literally no one was invited. Not even the parents, even though they knew. And we still hadn't had our professional pictures back, so we couldn't even show them a picture. This girl started sobbing her eyes out. How could you do this to your best friend? She randomly brought up the fact that she wanted him to be her maid of honour. Then was like, and I can't even get invited to the wedding. I'd just like to point out she isn't even in a relationship. She's very, very single. She was like, I don't know how we're going to come back from this. Our friendship is going to need some serious TLC. And this is in front of like the whole group. And as you can imagine, I've had enough. Could not take it anymore. I turned to her and I was like, listen, babe, he might be your best friend, but you're not his. I was like, this wedding was between me and him. You weren't even a consideration. Now the friendship group is completely split. The whole group were all Steve and Amy's friends before I came into the picture. And some of them think what I said was absolutely uncalled for. They said I should have just let Steve handle it. So what do you think? Did I take it too far? Am I the asshole for not drinking the coffee that my boyfriend has made for me? I, 24 female, have been with my boyfriend, 25 male, for three and a half years. He knows I am a bit specific about certain things, like tidying up or how I like to cook certain dishes and not to annoy him with those. I always make sure that I make them for myself. 
Now, my morning coffee is very specific. I like two teaspoons of instant coffee with two teaspoons of hazelnut syrup filled to the half cup with boiling water and the rest filled with oat milk. That is specific. And I like that in my specific morning coffee mug. I do realize that I sound very annoying, but because I am aware of it, I always make it myself and would never ask for someone to make my coffee exactly like that. When my colleagues are making me a coffee, I take whatever they make me and I say thank you very much. For three and a half years, my boyfriend has seen me make my morning coffee this way and got fed up with me refusing that he makes coffee for me. So I have shown him several times exactly how I like it. But still, every time he makes it for me, it's not the right dose of coffee or hazelnut syrup or it isn't in the right cup. I can get over that one to be fair. And I swear, I do not want to be that annoying, but the coffee just doesn't taste how I am craving for it to taste. It's like my body isn't satisfied with it and I keep craving coffee until I get it, but I don't want to have two coffees in the morning. I have told my boyfriend that I appreciate his gesture, but to let me make my coffee in the morning. This morning, he got annoyed when he asked me if I wanted coffee in bed, and I said, no, I'll make it. He said, quote, I know you're going to get up and make one, but just trust me. So I trusted him and he made me a machine espresso coffee with a bit of syrup and some milk. He said, thanks, but I don't want to drink machine espresso in the morning. Never have I ever drink machine coffee in front of him. I don't like it. And I only ever buy capsules for him because I'm able to remember how he likes his coffee. He got really angry at me, oh. told me he is just trying to be nice and I'm being an asshole about it. I very much disagree. It has been three and a half freaking years and I have shown him at least 10 10 times how I like my coffee. Once again, I never asked him to do this for me. I do not feel grateful for the gesture at all either, but am I being a spoiled asshole here? Am I in the wrong for telling a doctor to shut up on a turbulent flight? I-30 mail was on a flight from Atlanta to LAX last night. Pack flight, everyone was just trying to get some sleep. About two hours in, the lights come on and an announcement crackles to the intercom. Turbulence ahead, fasten seatbelts. Pretty standard stuff. Then all hell breaks loose. This woman, maybe late 40s, impeccably dressed, starts freaking out, screaming about air pockets, demanding to speak to the pilot, the whole nine yards. Flight attendant, super patient lady, bless her, tries to calm her down, explains it's standard procedure, turbulence is normal. Nope, not having it. This lady, who will name Jane, throws a fit. Not the screeching, nails on a chalkboard kind, but a cold steel fury. She accuses a flight attendant of lying, of putting everyone in danger, and demands to be deplaned immediately. Flight attendant says that that's not possible mid-flight, and Jane launches into this whole spiel about how she's a doctor, pulls out an ID to prove it, and if something happens, it's on the airline. Now, the rest of the plane is awake. People are grumbling, some looking scared, a baby starts crying. Flight attendant is trying to reason with Jane, but it's like talking to a brick wall. Finally, I just lose it. I yell out, probably a little too loudly, look lady, we all get turbulence. It's not a five-star resort, but it's safe. Sit down and shut up before you get yourself arrested. Everyone stares at me. Jane spins around, eyes blazing, and starts in on me about disrespecting a medical professional. I fire back that a real doctor wouldn't be causing a scene and freaking everyone out. The flight attendant dives in, trying to mediate, but the damage is done. We hit some turbulence, not terrible, but enough to jostle the plane. Jane freaks again, and some people start getting panicky. I feel awful. Maybe I made things worse. The flight attendant gives me a look that could curdle milk, but then steers Jane away to talk to her privately. By the time we land, things are calmer, but the tension is thick. Jane gives me a withering look as she disembarks, and a few people mutter things underneath their breath. So, am I in the wrong? Did I just escalate a bad situation, or was I right to shut down a meltdown that was putting other passengers on edge? I'm honestly not sure. Am I the astronaut for canceling my wedding after how my fiance feels about my daughter? Ah, shite. Before you read my post, I am not from America. I'm sorry if my writing is terrible, but I will do my best. For background context, I was married when I was 22 and my husband was 25. He had a daughter who was two when we married. I considered her my daughter in every way. My husband passed away sadly when she was four. So I, 34 female, have been with my fiance Jesse, 35 male, for eight years. My daughter Bailey is 14 female. She considers Jesse her father. Jesse has never treated Bailey wrong at all, but knows of my husband who had passed away. Jesse always treated her sweetly and like a daughter. I'm currently six months pregnant. We are all excited. Jesse has told me how he wants to adopt Bailey after getting married to surprise her. We're getting married in August. I wouldn't say we are close to being done with everything. But we did plan a big dinner, and I did invite my friends and Jesse's friends. Bailey was staying the night over at a close friend's house, so Bailey wasn't there. We were all catching up and having a great night. Just all around happiness from everybody, till the topic of the wedding came up. That is, when things went downhill. It was all good. We got talking about our honeymoon. We were going to bring Bailey, because that was our plan. When Jesse did say he didn't want to bring Bailey, which kind of shocked me. 
because we both agreed to it, I was taken aback from it. He started going on about how now we both have a real child and we don't have to pretend anymore to take care of my stepdaughter, who was never my real child. And there it is. This point, all of our friends and I were very flabbergasted and looked at him like he had said something crazy or like he had something crazy on top of his head. He kept going on and on until I kind of freaked out in front of everybody and told him that Bailey would always come first and he has last to me now that he had to leave and I'm canceling the wedding. He tried to talk to me, but I was not in shape to hear him. His friends escorted him out for me and left with him. Few of my girlfriends stayed with me that night. Jesse has been blowing up my phone so much, wanting to work things out. I honestly don't ever want to. I haven't told Bailey what happened and just lied to my family and his about why we canceled the wedding. I just want some quiet now and for and not for anyone to be upset. But some of his friends messaged me saying he has the right to talk about his feelings and opinions, which got me so puzzled at this point. Am I the astronaut? Hold 